Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, we're looking at the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the fourth subdomain called Apply Transitions and Animations. Overall, this only accommodates for 10 to 15% of the overall exam. And in my opinion, this domain is actually a little bit harder than most people think it's going to be. Let me go to throw up a graphic so you can see what we're covering in this video. This video is going to cover apply slide transitions, animate slide content, and set timing for transitions and animations. Let's go ahead and jump into PowerPoint. We're talking about the PowerPoint 2016 exam, and we're looking at the domain called Apply Transitions and Animations. We're looking at the first subdomain called Apply Slide Transitions. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to insert slide transitions. We had the first slide selected. What we're gonna do is go to the Transitions tab. We're in the Transition to this slide group, and I'm gonna click the More dropdown, and you can see that we have quite a few transitions that we can apply to this slide. I'm just gonna randomly choose one of them. We'll choose Ripple. And PowerPoint just showed us a preview of what that transition will do for this slide. Let's click on Preview to see it again. Maybe we don't necessarily like what we just saw. We can actually make some changes to this transition, which brings up the second point of this subdomain, and that's Set Transition Effect Options. If I go to the Effect Options, I can make some changes to the transition. So maybe we want it from the top right. And notice that small change to the transition. A question that I get asked regularly is, how do I know where to apply the transition to if it says between slide two and slide three? So let's click on slide three and different transitions are applied in different ways. So for slide three, I'm going to go ahead and click on cover. And to see where that transition falls, what I'm actually going to do is put my cursor on two and then I'm going to run the slideshow. So when I click, we can see that that transition was placed between two and three. I'll hit escape on my keyboard to exit the slideshow view. On the certification exam, if you're asked to do something similar, I would just run the slideshow to see where that transition was placed within your slideshow. And then I just wanna add a quick tip. I've been selecting individual slides to apply the transition. If I needed to apply this transition to all of them, I'm on the transitions tab. I'm in the timings group. I could click apply to all, which would make that transition apply to all slides. Let's do none and apply that to all because I want to show you one other thing. Maybe I need to apply this transition to just slide one, three, and five. I have one selected. I'll hold the control key down on my keyboard as I click three and five. And you can see that orange border around those slides. Now, if I do push, all three of those slides actually have that transition applied to them now. So that's a little bit easier way. You could also do control A with one of the slides selected to select all of your slides, and then you can apply the transition. We're looking at the subdomain called animate slide content. The first thing that this subdomain tells us that we should be able to do is to apply animations to objects. So I currently have a few different things on this slide. For example, I have this circle right here with some text on it to apply an animation to this. I would go to the animations tab and within my animations group, I'll click the more drop down. So you can see that there's a lot within this animations group. I'm just going to go ahead and do the shape and notice it went ahead and it faded that shape in. And now I have a little number one here and we'll talk about that more in the next subdomain. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to apply animations to text. So I have resources selected here. And what I could do is click on fly in. And now that animation has been applied to that text. But let me go to slide five because I have four different bullet points here. And depending on how I select these bullet points, an animation will be applied in different ways. For example, let me just go ahead and select all of the text here and click fly in for the animation. Notice that they all came in together and the number one is applied to all of them. That means they're all going to come in together. On the exam, that might not be what you need. If you want to have each bullet point animated differently, if I click on the outside border of this text box and click fly in, notice that each one of those bullet points now comes in one after the other instead of all at the same time. 
We're also told that we need to be able to set animation effect options. If I go to the effect options, I can change my direction. Maybe I want it from top. Notice that there's no fly in from the top instead of from the bottom. And then finally, we're told that we need to be able to set animation pass. I'm going to click the more animations drop down again. In this motion pass section, I have some of the pass that I could choose, but I can also choose more motion pass. And there's really a lot in this window. So maybe we want the curvy right. With this preview effect selected, we can see how that's going to be applied to our slide. We'll go ahead and click cancel. We're looking at the subdomain called set timing for transitions and animations. We're told that we should be able to set transition effect duration. We're on this fifth slide and in a previous part of this video series, we went ahead and applied a transition. So let's go back to the transitions tab. And I know I have a transition to the slide because there's a little star below the slide number. And that's telling me there's a transition applied to this slide. On the transitions tab, over here on the far right of the ribbon is my timings group. And that's where I can make a lot of these changes. For example, I have the duration here and maybe I don't want a second. I can make this three seconds by just clicking the up arrow or typing that in. On the advanced slide, maybe I don't want it on mouse click. I can do after and I can change the time for after or we could do both. It's up to you. You have the option of adding sound as well. And if I wanted to apply this to all of them, of course, I can click the apply to all. This subdomain also tells us that we should be able to reorder animations on a slide. So let me put my cursor within this text section with the bullet points. I'm going to go to the animations tab because I have four animations attached to these different bullet points. One of the best features that you should be familiar with for a task like this is the animation pane. And I'll click this arrow to drop it out and I'll actually pull this pane out so we can see it a little bit better. And currently, if I click play with all of these selected, it will play the transition for each one of those. But if I wanted to select an individual animation, I could select this and then I can just click and drag down if I needed to change the order. So maybe I want that to be three and I want two now to become one. And we can see over here on the left hand side that each one of these are numbered so that when I play them. We can see how the new animation changes will play. You also have this drop down for each of the animations. So you can change to start on click, start with previous or after previous. You have some effect options. One of the things that are unique is on the effects tab, you can change the sound. So if we wanted a bomb, we'll click OK. And we could hear that sound attached to this. On the timings group, you also have the ability to make some of those changes here, such as reorder the animation or change the duration or on click. This domain's really not a complicated domain, but with all of the little things that you could do to transitions or to animations, you could get confused or lost within the different features. So you should be familiar with not only applying transitions or animations, but all of the customization that you can do to them. Because on the certification exam, you really could be asked anything.